NVIDIA is investing $100 billion into OpenAI. Today we're talking about the deal and the subtle but real vibe shift that's happening around it. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. This week kicked off with a bang as NVIDIA and OpenAI, two of the most important and iconic companies in this new AI era, announced a massive $100 billion deal around data and compute. Let's talk first about what was announced and then what it all means. There are a couple parts of the deal. One part of the deal is that NVIDIA will invest up to $100 billion in OpenAI, and the other is that OpenAI has signed a letter of intent to deploy at least 10 gigawatts of NVIDIA systems to train and run their next generation of models. For reference, that's somewhere in the ballpark of 4 to 5 million GPUs, which is around 25% of the current total data center capacity of the United States. In announcing the deal, Sam Altman wrote, Everything starts with compute. Compute infrastructure will be the basis for the economy of the future, and we will utilize what we're building with NVIDIA to both create new AI breakthroughs and empower people and businesses with them at scale. Now, of course, this will happen in stages. It's not like Jensen will wire $100 billion to Sam and they'll break ground on a 10 gigawatt facility or anything crazy like that. But still, the sheer size of the deal is catching attention. Here's how Sam Altman described the deal in an interview on CNBC. Jensen said, building this infrastructure is critical to everything we want to do. Without Without doing this, we cannot deliver the services people want. We can't keep making better models. And now that we really see what's on the near-term horizon of how good the models are getting, the new use cases that are being enabled, what people want to do, this is like the fuel that we need to drive improvement, um, to drive, uh, drive better models, to drive revenue, everything. So this is, this is helping us get to a world, along with our partners at Stargate, Microsoft, Oracle, where we can build out increasing amounts of infrastructure to deliver on what the world is demanding out of these services. Now, I want you to pay close attention to that word demand as it is one that we're going to come back to in just a little bit. Now, when it comes to reactions, one strand, the frankly obvious strand, was in full force, which is, of course, the hand-wringing around the circularity of AI revenue and the argument that this is all just emblematic of this big AI bubble. You had some people use a simple visual metaphor, like the outlet plugged into itself, Others have diagrams to show the flow of compute and investment to pay for that compute. Others describe it in words. AI entrepreneur Sully Omar captured that Twitter virality with his version of this take, which has been around every time we see a deal like this. Sully writes, So let me get this right. Oracle says OpenAI committed $300 billion for cloud compute. Oracle stock jumps 36%. Oracle runs on NVIDIA GPUs, has to buy billions in chips from NVIDIA. NVIDIA just announced they're investing $100 billion into OpenAI. OpenAI uses that money to pay Oracle, who pays NVIDIA, who invests in OpenAI. Some tried to connect the dots to the dot-com bubble. Cashy writes, In the late stage of the dot-com era, when the stars of that period were feeling the pressure of slowing growth and weakening demand, they relied heavily on PRs, LOIs, MOUs, round-tripping, barter transactions, and vendor financing. The recent Oracle OpenAI and NVIDIA OpenAI announcements may indicate that we're approaching a similar stage. I therefore expect more of this hype until it all eventually collapses, and suddenly... Companies will announce a slowdown in demand as occurred in autumn 2000, misleading investors like they have never seen this slow of demand before, and it was all of a sudden moment. Some also tried to draw the connection to recent comments from Mark Zuckerberg on a podcast where he said, if we end up misspending a couple of hundred billion dollars, I think that is going to be very unfortunate, obviously. But what I'd say is I actually think the risk is higher on the other side. If you build too slowly and then superintelligence is possible in three years, but you built it out assuming it would be there in five years, then you're just out of position on what I think is going to be the most important technology that enables the most new products and innovation and value creation in history. Now, as you might imagine, that quote got lots of people saying, yeah, but didn't he say this about the metaverse? Investor Ross Hendrick writes, the top will put an end to the AI CapEx bubble, not the other way around. When did Zuck stop torching billions on the ill-fated metaverse? When the share price collapsed by 75%. No one knows when the top will occur, but that's what will put an end to this madness. And indeed, that's the way that one interpretation sees this, as madness. To use the famous Greenspanian phrase, a big bucket of irrational exuberance. In an article titled, AI Investments Carry Whiff of Vicious Circles Past, Reuters wrote, Artificial intelligence is spawning some genuinely concerning financial decisions. All this mutual backscratching is reminiscent of the bubble from a generation ago. Then, as new entrants as well as more established companies borrowed more than a trillion dollars to install telecommunications cables across ocean floors and beyond. Equipment suppliers, including Cisco, Lucent Technologies, and Nortel Technologies, enjoyed fast top-line growth and valuations. The problem was that the revenue underpinning the boom wasn't all that cracked up to be. Except the issue with that Reuters piece is that it wasn't written this week. It was written all the way back in 2023, right around the one-year anniversary of ChatGPT. I do not think that it is a problem to question the sustainability of these deals or to question the market's interpretation of events. 
In fact, I think it's absolutely critical to do so. However, these clever made-for-Twitter quips are not the analysis we need. All of these pithy posts simply willfully ignore the fact that unlike all those other booms, this one is anchored in real demand and real revenue. Revenue that ultimately comes back from people using the technology and adopting it in an incredibly rapid clip. Remember I told you to keep track of that word demand? That's the key thing here. OpenAI's revenue has grown from a million back in July of 23, or about a million and a half when that previous Reuters article was written, to 12 billion today. Anthropic this year alone has grown from one to five billion. And that revenue is not based on fake deals. It's based on individuals and companies deciding to open up their wallets and pay for a service that they find somewhere between incredibly useful and totally transformational. Investor Martin Bradstreet writes, this would be a circular Ponzi scheme, except we're missing the part where NVIDIA is trading GPUs for OpenAI equity because they expect it to make ridiculous amounts of revenue from the rest of the global economy as it is currently doing. OpenAI has 3 x the revenue of Palantir and double the growth rate. And the reality is, for the first time in some time, with this financing, I am actually seeing a bit of a counter-narrative. A vibe shift that is neither the make money during musical chairs of Wall Street, nor is the clever bubble posters on X, but is instead asking the question, what if this is real? What if we are actually just watching the beginning of a new global economy being built? Garrison Murado writes, I don't think we are giving nearly enough attention to the scale of what is happening before our eyes with OpenAI. The Kobayashi letter writes, the AI revolution is way bigger than you think. The NVIDIA OpenAI deal is colossal and its implications will be widespread. The investment in compute will flow downstream and spur incremental investment in various components of the AI revolution. Electricity is now the world's most crucial commodity. Writing in his financial newsletter on Monday, Anthony Pompliano argued that there are two major factors likely to drive stocks much higher. The first is the skyrocketing money supply, but the second was a fundamentals-based concentration on the largest U.S. tech stocks. He concluded that piece, Plenty of people are betting on the end of the party similar to the dot-com bust of 2000. But I wouldn't be so confident. Things in motion tend to stay in motion, and these large-cap companies are driving record profits and revenue growth year over year. Maybe, just maybe, these businesses are actually becoming more valuable at a rate we have never seen before. Time will tell. And I think this is the logical fallacy that we're dealing with here. Just because things are growing as fast as they are, and faster than we've seen before, does not mean that that growth is not real. Balaji Srinivasan writes, My explanation is the legacy economy is being sunset in favor of the internet economy. Since the 2008 financial crisis, every transaction and every communication has moved online, but we're still at the foot of the mountain. The next step is internet economies, communities, cities, presidencies. The world is becoming internet first. The point again is not to argue that we shouldn't be having concerned conversations about this. Markets are momentum machines, and even when developments are real, they can become over-exaggerated. But the critical conversation we deserve is not the one that we're having. And in the meantime, the world's biggest companies are completely convinced that there is nothing more important to be spending their time and resources on than this particular build-out. So over-exuberant or not, the future looks like more energy, more compute, more deals, and ultimately, more AI. And that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, be safe and take care of each other. Peace.